guys. And looks like this needs to move. Ooh. Whoa. All right. And whatever. Cool. So here we are. And for the first step, before we go over what we're looking at, I'm just going to put this project on GitHub because I should have done that in the last video. So let's do that. We'll share project on GitHub and hopefully all my credentials are stored. Otherwise, might not be able to do it so easily. Yep, that all looks fine. And let's check it out. Let me pull up a chat window for this. Oh yeah, cool, so that's on YouTube. And it gives me this weird www name, which I should probably fix, uh, but haven't yet, so. There we go. Okay, cool. So it looks like everything's working. And we can get on with the show. So, quick review. Here's what we're trying to do. Uh, actually, that's the API reference. So let's pull up a new tab here. We are trying to make this. And there's another column over here that I'm trying to get to pull in, but it's my internet's slow or some other sort of thing is making it lag. So anywho, right now we are pulling in trade information. So we're pulling in this the changes to the order book, as well as we'll get trades as they happen. So right now we've only got set up the streaming data. So all this data that already exists here, we haven't pulled in, but all the new information we are getting in the app right now. and we're trying to get to the step where we can store all this data and then pull it out into a UI that I guess looks something like this. It's a pretty difficult task, but we're gonna see how Android, uh, the new architecture components can handle it, which is hopefully gonna be pretty exciting. All right, so getting back over here and it wants me to say vcs.xml, which I'm pretty sure is the, like the settings for um, Android Studio, so let's go with no on that one. And let's just run the app to get a feel for where we were, and I don't know if I have an emulator up. Uh, you know, running it on the device isn't gonna be really helpful for you guys, so let's do that one. Give this a second to get pulled up. And if I remember correctly, we left off with this being an open orders table, and we need to make a bunch more tables for all the different types of order. So here, back in the GDAX uh, documentation, which remember is really good, tells us everything we need to know about stuff. Um, so, da, 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 so cool. These would be the open orders. These are done orders. So really what we're doing is we're making a table for just the different, making different tables for all the different types of messages that we can receive from the WebSocket. Uh, which just is what we use to get, this is WebSocket, right? Yeah, good, WebSocket. So WebSocket used to get streaming data, which is going to come in a lot faster and a lot more uh, reliably than it would if we were using like a REST API or something. Um, and so we've completed subscribing to that data using these steps, and now we're trying to follow these steps to create a real-time order book. Um, however, we are not doing this step right now, making a REST request to get the rest of the order book. We're just taking in the things that are new and putting them into the appropriate databases. Um, okay, so let's get to work. Without thinking about this too much, uh, I'm gonna take a naive approach of just making a table for received messages, open messages, done messages, uh, match messages. 
I guess change messages too, that seems good. And not margin profile update. So mar when you're trading on margin, that's when you are borrowing money so that you can buy more of something. Um, and so then margin is referring to the fact that you're taking out a loan to buy more, say, stock for instance. Uh, and so since we're not really looking at this from the perspective of any actual investors, there's no margin profile to update, so we don't need to worry about this one. Um, now, if you know, I'm lucky enough to actually finish this project and get to the stage where uh, people would be using this, which I don't see happening, uh, you would want to throw in stuff like this and uh, yeah it looks like that's kind of the only one you'd want to throw in here but there's other things in here like the, actually the ability to make trades and those sort of things um, but we don't we're not going to be looking at those so we've got change match done open and received and we've already got open and let's double check to make sure we've got all the fields and such that we need there so is that going to be be nice if that this all started expanded that'd be useful come on there we go get this guy open order okay so we've got and then my scrolling's gotten messed up over here that's no good back to open so we have sequence which we're using as the primary key and why I'm putting it first quit doing this to me and we got type and time, product ID, we're not using because it's always going to be ETH-USD. Uh, then sequence is our primary key, order ID, price, remaining size, size. So cool, we've got all the information for order, now let's do received. So let's make a new table, which is represented as class and not a Java class. So new, column file or class, and this is going to be received order. Uh, I'm double. I'm I'm second guessing the order naming convention, but that's okay. We'll leave it for now. We can always change things later. So received order. Uh, yes, add this file to get, and I'm just gonna hit this remember button because I really don't care that much. But adds something that I really don't want added. Not that big of a deal. Um, okay. So then to figure out how to do this, since I don't remember exactly, let's just hit open order here split vertically, and then it gives us two of these, which is kind of not necessary, so I'll close that one. Uh, great, so received order, so add entity, and table name, as received orders. Then we'll need a primary key of sequence, And that's going to be the primary key for each of these, uh, because remember, sequence describes in what order all of these different event messages are received. Um, so, e so what's cool about that is sequence will even be sort of like a, a meta primary key. It'll even be unique across all of these tables, which I don't think means anything to us really, other than we can use it to order the things. But it's interesting nonetheless. Um, so we've got then type. Type time, uh, we've already got, we're not doing product, we've got sequence, so type time, order ID, size is a new one, because uh, it's remaining size over here, so let's copy down from there as well. So, what is this complaining about? Primary. Oh, so this is all being inside the class right now, and what it needs to be is inside the constructor. So to do that, just get rid of the brackets and put it here. Uh, yeah, cool. So, and actually, we will need another line there. So, sequence. My screen's not exactly wide enough to hold all these, which is a little frustrating, but sequence type time order ID. Um, Order ID, so we need size, price, side, and order type. Uh, okay, so side. Then price. And what else was it? Side, price. Side. Oh, size, price, side. Ha. Size, price, and then side. 
And then it was order type, I think. Order type, throw in a bunch of commas. And then verify that these are all of the string type. String, 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 string. Sequence is not, but we've already got that one covered, and the rest are strings. Order type, side press size. Great. All right, so we've got received orders as a table. And then, boy, I bet when we get this done, we'll need, I'll want to put a new package in here to keep things organized. But we will wait on that. And it looks like we've got order, so we're going to need the DAO. Um, and I wonder if I should hold off on the DAO. I guess, let's go for it. Um, so I'm not entirely sure which methods are going to be important for this DAO. And I feel like with uh, the four tables, and or five tables, or however many it's going to be, this might end up not being the solution. Um, but it's important to just go with it, because that's the only way I'm going to figure out if it's the right way to go or not. Uh, cool. So actually, let's just copy this, make a new Kotlin class named, well, really, interface. And it'll be received. Yeah, the ed orders DAO. And then we'll just paste right over that. Change this to received orders DAO. And let's get received orders. Or received order, and then we can just copy and paste this over the other ones. Received orders. And actually, let's let's back this up. This is a this is a good shot to show something. So here we've got uh, Control R, Control R opens replace. Then we can do open orders, and we do not want to match case. So open, and really we just want to change open to received. So let's go open to received, and then we can change here preserve case which is going to make these go to capital R's and these stay lowercase I think so then let's hit replace and look this one even got fully capitalized so there we've got received orders now we've got the received orders table received order so yep got it all and I guess we're done with that so that's received orders and the fact that that was so easy is making me second guessing the fact or second guessing doing these all separate but we're gonna keep trucking and see where we end up. Uh, so we've got open, let's move on to done. And can we get that to show in half the screen? Go to done. Okay, so there's done. Let's do done order. And there's a class. And then let's just copy this over. That seemed to be a good way to get it done quickly. Let me just change this to done orders. And this one will be just done. Oh. Done order. Fantastic. Then we've got a sequence. Then type, time. ID, uh, so price and order ID are there. Then we don't have size, and it's nice to have things in the same order just so you can check them. So I'll move this one up to there to be above order ID, and then below it, we've got reason. And remaining underscore size, which is also a string. Cool, so remaining size, size, Oop, we don't have side. Side. Okay, remaining size. Oops, I have hit a button to bring up the IntelliJ help, which we don't need, so bye-bye. And back to here. All right, so remaining size, side, reason, order ID, price. You don't need sequence or product ID, so time type sequence, great. So now we've got done orders. And let me just check text real quick. Awesome, doing good. All right, so let's get a done orders DAO created. So this is gonna be another new interface, new cotton file class interface. 
And this is done orders database access object. And let's just copy over the received orders one and do the same thing we did last time. Okay, so we control R to bring up the replace dialog, then we can type in received and done. And we want match case not checked because we want this received to match with all of these receives. And we pr hit the preserve case checkbox to make sure that this done will be typed in the same way that this is this received is typed, so with capital D, that this one is typed, so all caps, and that these will be all lowercase. So let's hit replace all, and there we go. And since we're ordering by price, that we probably shouldn't have in here. Um, though it's not hurting us right now, so we'll leave it, but we should just do a double a sanity check real quick to make sure these have price in them. So price and received order, do you have price too? I think it does, yep, okay. So there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a sort of an arbitrary ordering at this point that we might think of a better one later. All right, so we've got done. Then we just need match and change. So let's do match. So new confiler class match order should be, I guess it should be matched order right yeah so that's weird that they use the past tense here for received and then match they use sort of the present tense um, but we'll go with whatever naming convention they use uh, and then this is uh, this one's just a class and then let's copy over done order and let's go to match order get this out of the way, get out of the way it's over, yep, import all that stuff match, come down here match, then we've got for a match, we do have sequence, uh, type, time, but before time we have a maker and taker order ID. So again, maker order ID, that's the one who is um, placing a market order. So the taker is the one whose order exists already, and the maker is the one who says, yep, I'll buy at that price. So the taker puts their order out publicly, and then the maker is the one who comes along and says, yeah, I'll take that one, that's good. Um, so let's get those in there. So we've got sequence type, then trade ID. I think that's a new one. So let's let's get that in there after type trade ID. Then we need maker and taker order ID. And so for those, I'll take order ID actually and put that after trade ID twice, and then do maker and taker. Then we've got time, product ID, which we're not using, then size, price, and side. So neither of those we need. So that instead of an order ID, we have the taker and the maker order IDs. And let's make this size. And then so we've got side as the last one over here. So we'll move size up to below time. And then we've got price and side. Yep, that all works. And then just while we're here, just to get it done quickly, let's do change right in the same spot. So I'll just copy this. And maybe this is the way to make it look better. Who knows? Uh, so change order. There's nothing wrong with defining two classes in one file. It's just not usually done. You know, it's against uh, not a best practice because you're, you're sort of hiding it. But for just typing it out quickly, there is nothing wrong with this. So we've got sequence, type, which we don't actually have, so we'll give it a type. Uh, so, wait, no, we do have type. It's the first one. <laughs> All right, so then we have time after type, then sequence, which we're keeping at first because that's our primary key. Uh, so time, then we have order ID, which we're taking back. And instead of trade IDs, we'll just type order over this one. 
And then we don't have maker or takers, so we've got time, order ID, product ID, which we don't need, new size and old size, because this is a change order, so I guess that makes sense. New size, old size, then price and side. Okay, then let's copy this, or rather cut it. And you know, why did you hide everything again? Let's make a new, make this match order, no, not match, this is change order class. Cool, and then let's paste it in here, accept our imports, remove this extra space. And now we just need to create two more DAO objects. So let's take open orders DAO and we'll create a new match order DAO. We are using plural there, so match orders DAO. Interface, okay. Paste it in, I think. Yeah, okay. Then do accepting the imports, and then we want to replace open with, I think it was match, yeah? Is this is match? Yep, match. And all our checks are in place, so that's good. So then let's do another new Kotlin class, rather interface, named changed, I guess we'll just call it changed. It's so weird to me that they have received and then changed, should be changed. Uh, so change orders DAO interface, get this in here, then we can paste over it, get rid of this guy, uh, we don't need to shift F6, don't need to refactor anything here, just control R, open for change, and it doesn't matter that I typed that capitalized I don't think, but let's just be safe there, change orders now, create, got all of that, okay, so, we have the ability to insert into all of these tables and delete the orders we'd like to. So this is deleting a list, this is inserting one at a time. So this is, I've probably been using this for cleanup I think is what I remember. Um, but we'll need to be using that more as open orders become matched uh, and so on and so forth. Okay. Wow, so I guess now we want to populate all of these tables, which let me just make a new package for data. And then let's put all of this stuff in there. Um, yeah, so we can refactor this to, or not really, I guess refactor is the right word, um, to put them in actually in that package, and if that doesn't work, we can undo that. But sometimes when I'm feeling lazy, yeah, whatever, Kotlin, I just, right, yeah, we need to move the rest of it. Um, wait, what? Why are you complaining? Oh, because you're listing this whole thing here? That's frustrating. You've been moved. You're inside the, the package now. You don't need that. This is not where you live. Okay. Okay, so that's fixed. So sometimes I'll create new folders that I don't really use as packages. I'm just using them. Uh, so if I want something to be at the same package level as something else, but I want to group it under a different folder, you can do that. Just don't update. So if you just take this like that, it'll throw a warning that this isn't where it's located, but that doesn't you know, it's, it's a warning, it's not the police, so you don't have to obey that if you don't want to, and sometimes I don't, but here I think we can obey it just fine. Um, and also, of course, don't, don't do that in your company stuff, that's probably not allowed. Um, cool, so let's move the rest of these, I'll use shift and the up arrow to grab them, and then put them in here, hit refactor, and we'll see what sort of red squigglies we get, and I'm going to make this bigger because it's really small. We're not using this side so much anymore. Okay, and we're ready to update. What does that mean? Oh, right. This is... Sorry, I'm on the Canary build at work, but not on this computer. Um, so, this probably does need to update. Okay. So, all these have been moved in. App database feels data E as well. And looks like we need to make some changes in here. So look, we've got open orders stuff. So let's uh, let's get the rest of this. So 
So we've got open, and then we can just highlight this one and hit Control R and do open. Oh, really? You're going to do it like that? Fine. So open and change, and let's just highlight this one. And then we can do end selection, and it'll just do it in the selection, which is really nice. So we can just do this the whole way down. Um, so, oh, and since it's going to complain about these imports, let's move this guy up into here where it belongs first. Now we're good with that, right? Yep, cool. So then let's highlight this line and replace open with done. And we've got in selection and preserve chase checked, so we're in good shape. Replace all. Then get this line. And actually, what's a, is it control W or is that gonna close this on me? Cool, it is control W. So control W uh, on Linux and Windows. Sorry, I get mixed up between Mac and uh, Windows and Linux sometimes with the keyboard shortcuts being different, which is frustrating, but part of the job, I guess. So, anywho, Control W is the select more of this thing. So, if you hit Control W here, we're going to select the whole thing, and then a little more, it's going to select a little more, and then another hit selects the whole line. So, we can just do that to select the whole line if we don't want to mouse over. Or really, just nice to have options. Um, so, open in this case, we're doing for match, and I think, does enter do it? Yep. And no. What? Why was that not changed? Oh, because enter probably did replace instead of replace all, so I could hit it again. And okay, there we go. Yep. So hitting enter only hit replace there. So uh, and I guess on this one we'll, we'll try tab. And I didn't need to close that. Alright, so we've got open. And this one is received. And then if we do tab. Nope, not going to help us. So there's really not an easy way to get to replace all other than clicking it. A little frustrating there. Uh, and maybe I'm wrong on that. Also possible. And now, what's really cool is we can minimize this and feel good about our project again. Because um, this is... It's, it's just a lot of... Uh, just a lot of stuff to look at. And it just makes you feel like you've got a really big project on your hands. And I... I hate that because it's, you know, this is all well structured and we've all, it's all under control. So it should look like it's under control and I feel like it looks under control when it's in its own way. Like that. Alright, let's get back into here. Uh, so first, first impressions on looking back through this main activity code, this is kind of a mess. Uh, yeah, this is, this is gross. This is, I mean, it's, it's where it should be for after two hours of work last week and 30 minutes of work now, but we can do better. Um, cool. So, let's take this and see what we can do. First thing we need to do is we should factor out our listener into a separate class. And let's see, let's just do that and see what happens. So new, uh, and should we do the listener? Or actually, can we do something a little bigger? We might be able to take, so this listener is a part of, we can see over here uh, where we find instances of that, but it's part of the WebSocket, which is being created outside of onCreate, which means, let's just make, can we make a WebSocket object, our own object of that? Let's. Uh, I guess we can we can start by just making a listener class. Um, no, I want to go bigger than that. WebSocket, where do you get used? You're right here. So we close you, and that's it. We well, I guess we close you and we open you by doing this, which is fine. Um, get WebSocket. Yeah, I'm going to make a WebSocket class. That seems like the way to go. So we've got, I'll just call it my WebSocket for now. Uh, I kind of hate doing that naming convention. It's not, you know, very clear, but I also love this naming convention because it does make it so that you can, um, you know, actually just keep, get on with what you need to do. So let's hit close others there because that's getting a little busy. Open back up main activity because we need that one. And all right. Um, so this guy as a class. 
So let's pull in all of this, the listener, the client, the request. And how do we feel about that? Not so good. It looks like on message is going to need a database. So I've got a cool way that we can get access to that. Um, then we need to get our WebSocket. Oh, client.dispatcher, okay, that's fine, that's fine. All right, so we'll create a WebSocket, then we need to add an ability to get this. So let's add a shutdown method on our WebSocket. So let's just, let's just call my WebSocket dot, which do we need an instance of it? Let's just call shutdown. Actually, that's not a great idea, but Let's just add a function here, and we, we will have an instance of my WebSocket, um, but shutdown, not shot down, shut down, uh, shut down, which I guess we can do like that, and then, cool. So then, n on create, or really we can do val WebSocket, equals my WebSocket, right? And then this will be WebSocket.shutdown. Okay, and then calling my WebSocket here should trigger all of this stuff getting created. Um, as values of the my WebSocket class. So what we have left to handle here is what do we do with all this data? Ah, man, we have to parse it all out too. This is, I really want a better way to do this. Because um, right now we've got, how many tables is that? Change, done, match, open and receive. We've got five tables worth of data each with basically the same columns but with a few minor differences that we need to pull into uh, or pull out of JSON rather you know I guess it's not that painful to do it this way I probably just won't uh, create new variables for each one but um, so let's create an, an order parser class just because this looks like junk and we're going to need a lot of it. Um, Alright, so new not whatever I clicked there. <laughs> new uh, Kotlin file or class and then we're going to name it whatever I just said we were going to name it. Mm, JSON parser or really mm, order parser that sounds no, event? What do they call these? Messages? Yeah, messages. Message parser. Or really reader or anything. I mean, it doesn't matter too much. So, I guess it can be a class. With Kotlin, it's, you know, you really don't have to make things classes, but it is, um, you know, what we're used to in Java, so we'll keep with it. So let's start by, let's get this visible. Actually, it wasn't wasn't main activity. It's now in website. We've moved it, um, and we I'll handle getting this DB. I'm not worried about this guy yet. We're just not quite to that step. Just so you don't think I'm forgetting about it. Let's close this and this guy. Give us some more room. And since we, eh, it's nice to have a little room to click over there. All right, message parser. So let's start with maybe a method called read message. And that's going to take in, looks like a string, so message string. Then when, well, first we should read type, so let's, uh, I'll just type that. JSON? Can I get, oh, okay, oops. Yeah, I get it. guess we're just gonna copy it. That seems to be a little easier. Follow best practices, sort of deal. 
All right, so now we've got the type, and this is called a message. Um, so we've got the type, which is again going to be one of those five things. Uh, so let's do win, which is in Kotlin basically a switch statement, except they're a lot nicer and more concise, easier to use. So win type. And what are you telling us about this? The expression is unused. Yeah, well that's true. I haven't written the win statement yet. So win type, and they are. I wonder if it would help to have these as a list. We're not going to do that yet, but let's get there. And oh, there we go. We can read them right there. So. to be very pedantic and keep them in the exact same order as they are, or, which is alphabetical. We'll do change, and then a semicolon, so it'll just give me that line there. So change, done. And the other, I'm only putting a semicolon there because when I hit enter here, it's just being annoying. So that, uh, done, match, uh, open, and received. And then let's call, I guess like parse change order or read change message. We can just do a bunch of different functions like that. Um, yeah, it might, I mean, that might be more, you might be able to do it more in a loop and have it be less code, but I think for readability and just general maintenance, this seems like the easy way to do it. Um, so let's let's do it this way. Done message. Da, 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 da. And then so done. This one goes to match. Open. Received. Then we can just alt enter to create all these. And actually I'll start at the bottom. So they get created in the same order. Kind of a nice way to do it. Ooh, that's not what I want to do. So get that out there. Your change message. All right. So, whoo. Then, so this is this is the part of the program that's going to read the message and then kick out what type of message we're reading. Then in here, we're going to read that message and put that information into the database. Uh, so insert it into the right uh, table. I wonder if that means delete from as well. It probably does. So read open message. Uh, okay, and then so let's get this taking in. What are you, DB? You are A. Does this not have a type? Is this in column? No. Turn DB, which is of T. Um, database builder dot build. Let's just look that up real quick. Builder, so build. event database or whatever so I guess it's whatever database type that is right so I guess it's app database yeah I guess that makes sense so this is gonna give us an app database so this needs to take in uh, and it's not my web socket that needs it actually so this isn't we're not even going to pass in DB into web socket we're gonna pass it into this message parser because this is what's gonna have this code anyway so we pulled all this out this isn't really here anymore um, well I mean this part is but this part's not going to be so 
db, which is app database. Wonder what the different why. It's interesting. So this looks like this is a, a class that's maybe in the build folder, uh, since it's not here. So that maybe that'll get cleaned out with a, a build then clean. But we're, we want that one. So okay, we've got database. So then we've got read open message here. Let's copy this guy, put it into read open message. Yep, that's good. We really don't need to import that too, right? We should be, oh no, we're not in that. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so then we need this, the JSON bit. You know, that, that makes sense. So let's pass that in. Yes, we can do that as lowercase. I don't really have an issue against that. So control R and we'll do replace J S O N with J S O N and Yep. Okay, there's that. And then type. You know, we don't really need type here, it's going to be order, which we do have type. Hmm. So I guess we can we can insert the type every time, or we could just set this to open. It's almost we actually we actually don't need the type columns here at all because type is very defined by what table this is in. So strict strictly speaking, I don't think that's necessary, but I could be useful in the future so we'll leave it and for now we'll just insert the word open because that's what it's going to look like coming across and um, and API yeah it's just lowercase the word so it would come across as open so we'll just insert open and then we can even just put open open right there to give our um, our error logging to have the same message and all right, we've got that split out. I think we're in a good place to run this and see if we can still get the same results we've had before. Um, but first, we need to get rid of, we need to clean a few things up, uh, like adding our call in here to, when we get a message, we need to have, so my WebSocket, and I guess my WebSocket will need a database um, so val db app database then and the message when we receive the message we're just going to and first we should have an object up here that can handle it so our message parser so parser equals message parser with the database passed in and then we can take our parser and then instead of doing all of this we can, we can still add the message, nothing wrong with that. But we can do parser dot read message and do that. And so now the WebSocket, and actually that doesn't, that's cool. So we don't need the val there since this is getting used immediately as a uh, basically a constructor parameter. So this would be the same code as if we did it this way. Init not parser equals parser, parser equals um, message parser db. So, what do you want? Oh, yeah, but if you do it that way, you do need to say what type it is. Which I didn't specify correctly, but still, um, you can split it up like this if you want to use init blocks. Uh, and it'll tell us, yeah, that you can use assignment instead, but that's it's not even a warning, it's just a sort of an information thing. And then we get back to where we were, though we don't need this. It is optional. All right, we don't need this either. We can clean up our imports. There's a shortcut for that. It's like control shift I, I think. Uh, and all right, 
got our open, got our message, we're going to read it. We can get rid of having that twice. That's a little much. And then so we should be able to run this and see our open orders coming in over here in our message parser. And um, what was I going to do? Oh yeah, but we need to change an app database. We need to change this version up to four or we're going to get an error. So hopefully this, and again, I think it's so cool that, that just changing that to four just fixes everything behind the scenes. Um, really nice. So let's run this, pull you on over since we're not doing split screen anymore. This over, and I will take a chance to look at text. Cool. All right, so where did we forget to pass in a DB? Right here. So let's do that. Looks like we missed a squiggly. And then let's hit run. All right. We have a bunch of errors. So let's see where we screwed up and change orders table. It looks like it should be called change. Why are these all so long? Goodness, that is crazy. So let me fix that real quick. So using middle mouse button, you can just drag down over all of this stuff. Order, open order, and let's get match orders good, done order, looking crazy. And change orders, still looking crazy. Get rid of that stuff. All right, so it says no such table, change orders. Not sure how to return. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I kn we know JSON's not being used yet. Okay, um, so that's probably from here maybe? From change underscore orders, which is called change underscore orders. Interesting. Any of these section of the database. Oh yeah, look at that. What a that is so nice. So another thing that I'm really happy with about the room database is just these little error messages are really helpful. So here maybe you forgot to add change order to the entities section of the add database. So it looks like we've got this entity section, and we've got our classes. So let's uh, let's update those to have all the ones we need. Change order colon colon class, comma open order, which is not next. It's done order. Come on, Ben. Done order class. Open order class. Oh, which, where should I make this a new line? Open order class. Uh, so. Match order class. Open order class and received order class. Received order class. All right, then let's, I guess, split it right there. That looks fine. All right, let's try this again. Hopefully we don't have to update version to five um, or else it'll give us another helpful All right, we are running the app. All right, cool. And then if we scroll down in here, is that all from today? No, that's not from today. So this is logging an emulator that has since been disconnected. Let's pick one that's running, that, that would be useful. Okay, there we go. So we've got a bunch of messages and capital letters, which shouldn't we be having other things too? Let's see. Over and open. Uh, not open orders, we want message parser, sequence. Some of these should just start with sequence, right? If we got into here. So let's stop logging all the messages we get. 
because that is a lot of messages. And that's going to be in, and let, let's, uh, let's close all of these and just reopen the couple we're interested in. So we are hitting this log message, then hitting parser.readMessage text. Oh man, I have capitalized these letters. That is my fault and definitely what the problem is. Apologies. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. All right, back in my web socket. Let's stop reading the message for now. We've seen a bunch of messages. We know what's coming through. Uh, and so we'll leave it just to show our much more helpful message from read open message. Because uh, this is trying to make sure this runs, we populate the rest of these and then have our database be updated with all the data we need. And there we go. So we've got all the open messages coming through. And now we just have to get the rest of them into the database. All right. So let's, I guess, let's start with uh, whatever we can find over here. Match sounds good. For that, let's hide this guy, give us some more room so we can see everything on the same page. Let's copy over. Oh, I guess, I guess everything. All right, so we've got sequence, then type is, of course, match. We're going to have trade ID. We're gonna have two, so let's do this. We'll get a taker order ID, a maker order ID, and a trade ID. And we need to copy all of these over here or they won't get pulled in. Great, so got those. Get time, which is below those. And then we just need the last four, or the last three really, size, price, and side. So this just needs to say size, then we have price and side, and that should do it. Then we're gonna create an event, which we're gonna create a new one. This is gonna be a match order, and it's going to equal, just kidding, match order, new match order. So we start with the sequence, so sequence, comma, match for the type, comma, trade ID, maker, taker, new line. Oh, wait, need a comma. A new line, and then uh, time, size, price. Side, of good, everything's the same. Time, size, price, and the side. Is a lot. Do we do this? I guess we'll keep it all in the same line since that's what I did for the other one. Okay, then we're going to take this from match orders DAO, insert event, nice. We can not log these anymore. If we want our logging, we can just log it out here. So we'll bring that guy back, why not? Until we have something better to log. All right, now I gotta do the same thing three more times. So let's move up or move down here to change. And then grab this one, this guy, put you in change. We've got sequence, type is change. Then we've got time. Then we've got order ID, product ID we don't need. We've got new size and then old size. So we'll take this, duplicate the size line, give it new, give it old, and we got price inside, and then this is a change order. So change order, which is going to be sequence, right? Sequence change time. Order ID, new size, old size, price, side, and that's it. So then we've got our change order. We can change this to change orders now. Nice. Then we're going to get a done order, which is 
up here somewhere. Get this guy, copy this out. Let's run this. Then we've got sequence, then we got time, we got time. <laughs> we've got type and then time. So time. We need product ID, we don't need sequence. So then we need price and order ID. So let's get price above order ID. Then reason side and remaining size. So reason side and remaining size. And I've just noticed that we need to do, we need to update these string sections over here. So do that side, side, reason, reason, order ID, trade ID, those look good, side, side, price, price, old size, new size, order ID, time, time, sequence, sequence, good. Okay, so then for here, we've got time, Product ID, so we're going to sequence, price, order ID, reason, side, remaining size, perfect. Then I can drag from right here to delete this line. Nope. Tab yourself back over there, we need. Um, done. Order. Then it is sequence, time, price. Order ID, reason, side, and remaining size. And me being impressed that I can type that fast, I'm not sure that I could do that consecutively. All right, so done, orders down, got that one, and now I've just got one more. So let's copy this guy. Let me double check, we got these all right. Yep, 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 yep. And yep, 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 perfect. So. Then we need received, which is the first one, and it has a type, which we don't need, then a time, so good, then a product ID, which we don't need, and a sequence, which we've got, then an order ID, which we can put after time. And then size price, so let's make this size, and then price, and then side, so let's get rid of reason, so side. And then instead of remaining size, we need order type. So let's get order type, put that over here, and then delete, enter, shift tab, shift tab, event equals received message, or received order rather. And then it's sequence, time, order ID, size, price, side, and order type which should all be the same variable names. Right, right, that, what, did I, what did I get wrong here? Ah, well that's, that's my fault. Yeah, I should keep the naming convention I think, so let's, uh, but that's gonna change the column name. That's frustrating, but okay. Order type. What? No, don't. Where is that? Where are you even finding these? Just, all right, don't refactor. Just, just do as I say. Order type, we'll just make it a new version of the database. And let me just open up all these orders to make sure that I'm not uh, using camel case or whatever that case is called in a way that's going to be confusing like that one was. So we're going to see we've got the underscore, that's good. Matching the docs, keeping things simple, that's how you avoid bugs. Okay, so close and close and close the order, fellows. Good, get out of here. You're gone. And uh, then bump this up to five because that's probably a change in database from a column name without an underscore to a column name with an underscore. And then this is a received order. We need to change this to received. That one, insert. Okay, then when we hit the button, let's print something from received orders. And that'll be our test to see if we've got it. And we'll, we'll stop, uh, where am I? There we go, reading them. 
stop logging all those messages because that just gets really noisy. Okay, so we're going to run this and we're going to it's going to take in some data and it's just going to be taking in all of that data, all different, all five of those types of orders are just going to be coming in, getting stored into our five different tables and we're just going to have that data. Um, we're not doing anything with it yet, we will, um, but step one, take in all of the data, put it in a database. And that's where we are right now. And presume just letting this run for a few seconds so we can get some data in there. Um, and it won't be logging because we're not printing the log anymore. Though, that's, maybe there's an error, we'll find out. So let's click the button. And cool, so we have a lot of received orders in our database. Nice. So, now that we, well, you know what, let's print off everything, make sure we've got it all, all working out. So, here's what I'm going to do, going to backspace this, put it all in one line, duplicate it, then just call each of these, open, change, done and match and that'll give us a chance to just make sure they're all working what are you calling an error on yeah that's right that's what I thought um, and and just just as another sanity check because this is it's a lot of data it's you know we, we've just written a lot of code to get all this set up with the new room database stuff really cool by the way loving it but um, but so the next step that we're going to take is to figure out the interplay between these five different tables. So obviously when an order gets matched, so when the trade happens, we don't really need that data anymore. It's not obvi it's obviously not an open order. You know, whichever order was open has now been closed. So we need to, uh, I'm sure we're going to need to figure out how to keep these databases up to date with just what's going on in the real world. Um, so I think that's going to be the next step. Um, or maybe showing something graphically, we'll, we'll see kind of where we end up, but let's click the button. And we've got received orders, bunch of received orders, just a lot of received orders. Was that the last one? Okay, so that was the last run. So this is the current run, still a lot of received orders, doing great on received orders. Uh, then we've got open orders, which does that match? Okay, open orders, good. Then done orders which that's fine you know we didn't didn't see a changed order but remember changed orders are going just going to be a lot less f frequent uh, and, but that's something to look out for you know if we don't see changed orders going forward we've definitely got something going wrong there so we'll want to be on the lookout for changed orders going forward i don't think this is a bug but we should still find confirmation at some point okay so then we've got a bunch of done orders and no no match orders so Let's see if we, if we click the button again. We've got receives. Can we scroll a little better here? And then we end it done again. So we don't have any matched orders either. So let's look through here and see what, let's just read again what these mean. So a match is a trade that occurs between two orders. The aggressor or taking order. So uh, in my mind, I'm thinking, what is the difference between a match and a done? Uh, so when a match happens, it sounds like, right, this is exactly what I, I think a match would be, is when a match happens between, you know, somebody who has an order on the books and somebody who wants to buy that order. And that's going to be a match. So what, it, what does done mean? And done is, the order is no longer on the order book. This is sent for all orders for which there was a received message. So this message can result from an order being canceled or filled. We're not gonna get any more orders for an order ID after it's done, and the remaining size indicates how much of the order went unfulfilled. Okay, so if you have an order and it gets filled, that's gonna be zero, that makes sense. And market orders will not have a remaining size or price field as they are never on the open order book at a given price. Okay, does that complicate things for us? Um, so I understand why a market order wouldn't have any remaining size, um, 
but price would be, and I guess it could be across several prices, so maybe that's why you wouldn't, like if, it, if you have a market order for like a thousand shares, and then the orders on the book are like, there's one for a hundred shares, there's one for 20 shares, there's one for 300 shares, so if you did that market order there, you'd be hitting all of those people's uh, orders, and so you'd be getting hit at multiple price points, so I, I guess I understand why a market order wouldn't necessarily have a price field, um, but this is a little complication we'll have to deal with, and I'm still not sure where done orders kind of differ between the match here um, and the maker order is a resting order immediately after being excuse me maker order side the trade occurred between two orders the aggressor or taker order is the one executing immediately after being received, and the maker order is a resting order on the book. All right, so let's. Do we have do we have any matches yet? Okay, spilled a little bit. Um, so we've got, let's look through, see if we did something wrong in our match table. So I feel like we should have matches. Match orders DAO. Match order, oh, that's frustrating. We don't need all that. It'd be nice if you would import those things. So let me update that real quick. Um, oh, man, that is frustrating that it's gonna just adds in all that stuff instead of just importing it. <sighs> Have you done this on any of the other DAOs? Boy, you sure did. That's fun. <laughs> what? Import. Do it. All right, so match order, table name, match orders. It's got match order all over the place. Match orders DAO is selecting from the match orders table, which we're getting. And are we are we importing, are we setting these correctly? Are we reading, we're reading match orders, then we're creating match orders, we're putting them into the match orders DAO. Why are we not getting match orders? Are matches not happening? Is that, I mean, uh, so, let, actually, if we have a done order, should have a reason, and if it was filled, you'd think that's a match. So let's look at our done orders, actually. Now let's look through the reasons. Buy and sell. You know, that's funny. It says reasons are buy and, and sell. Um, and all of our done orders are actually canceled, too, for the order ID. Which is a really weird order ID, because um, shouldn't we need to know which ones are canceled? But wait a minute, we're messing this up, aren't we? Because this is side, this is reason, yeah. So this, this is wrong. Okay, cool. So done is uh, we're getting some wrong information there. Let's look at it. So we've got done. Nope, we don't need captures. Reason, reason, side, side, remaining size, remaining size. Did I do these in a different order? So, sequence, oh, we forgot to type in, done. Then time, price, order ID, reason, side, remaining size. Okay, that that's good. Did we forget that anywhere else? Yes, we sure did. Here it received. Which, I don't think would have made a difference in any of this, but let's run this again. And... Oh, hey, uh, Nils, I'm looking at chat on YouTube. There's a, so I'm doing this on Linux, and um, the Restream chat has a web thing, and it's up, but it, it doesn't seem to be working. I mean, I don't know if this shows, but it's right here, and it's like, 
this doesn't look right, right? Um, so I'm not really sure what's going on with that, but I'm looking at chat over here on my laptop and YouTube, so I'm, I'm checking this every once in a while, um, and I just need to figure out what's going on with the, how to get the chat to show up in the stream, as well as all that other stuff, but, so I'm, I'm paying attention, I'm watching. If you've got any questions, feel free to post them. Um, cool. So, did we run this new again? I'll just hit run again, because I forget, but there we go, run. Okay, we'll let that run for a second, a few seconds. And actually, let's make sure, I'm gonna sit over here and I wanna watch. All right, there's a trade that happened. I don't have seconds down here, but it, you know, it happened this minute. So let's wait for a new trade to happen. It looks like they're happening every minute or so. So we shouldn't have to wait long. Cool, there we go. So we've got a trade that happened right there at the price of $254.50 for 3.7866 Ether. And there we've got another trade. So let's just give this a little more time, let the trades roll in a little bit. And that way we know for sure that some trades happened while the app was taking in data. And then we should really see some matched orders or at least some done orders that weren't canceled. All right, so we've got a third and a fourth trade. That's good enough for me pop over here, hit the button, and that's going to add a ton of log stuff. Let's see, this is 11.13, so that's current log. All right, we've got received orders. And actually, let me pop back over to, uh, is it parser? No, it's here. All right, okay, so we've got received orders. A lot of received orders. Wait, was there a different type up there? How does this? Oh, so this is from presumably the data that we had in the table from the old run where it was just old. So see how it's got the type wrong. We haven't updated that to be received yet. So we'll want to clear the data in these tables as well. So here we've got open orders, bunch of open orders. And then we go straight to done, no changed orders. Again, that's not unbelievable. Because presu presumably if you're gonna change an order, a lot of times you just cancel it and place a new one. So that's that seems fairly normal. So I'd still wanna see one eventually. And all right, scroll down all the way, we just don't see really anything that we're looking for there. None of the, none of the matched orders are coming through. So I'm not sure really what's going on there, but if we do done orders and we do reasons here, canceled. Hmm. So we know we know that orders happened, but we're not seeing them for some reason. So at this point, we need to find out if those orders are coming through at all. Um, and I'm not entirely sure of the best way to do that, though I might just turn back on our log message on the WebSocket, and then we'd be able to search through this for the text of match or you know whatever else it's supposed to say for us. Um, but also, we should delete the information from our tables. So one, two, and we've got match, right? Yep, right there. Match order, match orders down, match orders down. So nothing wrong with match orders right here. Um, don't need to import that. So, I know we deleted there. So we, we did delete from open orders, and we can delete from the rest of them too when we start up the, um, start it up just so that we're not keeping the old data. So you'd want to not do this, and your actual app, obviously, because you don't want to be deleting all of your data when you start it up. Um, though, actually, maybe for this case you would, because you'd want a current order book, so you'd want to delete everything in there and just start from fresh. All right, so let's run this. We can get logs by clicking the button, but we're not necessarily going to. Instead, we're going to be looking at messages, and we'll 
we'll filter down to done messages specifically. So, uh, Ultra Min, to answer your question, we are building this. And what this is, is uh, this is people buying uh, a token called Ethereum or Ether for dollars. And it's just, just a market of you know people saying down here, hey, I wanna buy 18.5 of them for $253.50 a piece. And then people up here who say, no, I wanna sell it you know, 300 for $254. And then just a, a bunch of information around that trading activity. Uh, and what makes this a really good project is that they've got a great API and it's just really complicated. So it's not, it's not trivial and it's something that can really put all this new architecture components and Kotlin stuff and really test it with this, I, th I feel. Um, so the, the pie in the sky goal would be that every, it's gonna look just like this when we're finished, uh, which is obviously not true, but that's, that's kind of the guiding light um, and also makes this, this project pretty easy to understand just from a scope perspective, is this, it's just kind of this, and we're gonna tr just try and do this and see where we end up. Um, so, okay, sweet, we have an error, uh, which I guess we're printing, which means we're catching it somewhere. I'd like to know where. Um, do, I, do I even have a catch block anywhere? No, okay. So, no value for price. Oh, right. Let's let's look at here. Did did we see that was gonna happen? Am I, am I kind of a fool? Um, so, and we're printing it first, right? So I want to make sure we're, we're printing this message before we get into it, because then the failure is on this receive message right here, and that's that's fairly important to know. So, so we want to be printing before this is called control B to jump to it. Yep, we are. So the, we are printing the message on this received order, and then order type is market, size, size, product, the sequence, time, and so are we expecting a price with the received order? Let's find out. So go over here to the project, expand our stuff. We're gonna pull up the received order thing and data received order price, which defaults to something, which should be fine. Um, so it's probably actually errors in here in message parser. Read received order received message price so we are trying to pull a price out and let's get that in line so okay there we're trying to access a price and here we do not have a price because it is a market order so and is that is that what it says in the docs Yeah, okay, so it doesn't necessarily say it as much over here as it does over here. Um, so it looks like we have to handle not only received orders of this format, but also of this format. The difference being, let's see, type, time, product ID, sequence, order ID. Oh man, okay, so let's, <laughs> that's a bummer, but let's let's handle that and how we can handle it. We're gonna pop into read received message. Um, and let's go back to received over here. And so the difference in this t section is we have to further filter, so not only on type to get to received, which we filter up here with this when statement, but we also then, if it is received, we need to filter on order type. So fun, um, but does that mean we need to have two tables for received orders? I don't, where does it, so we've got order ID, size and price versus 
funds, I think. Yeah. So size and price versus funds. So we've already got size and price. I think we just add funds and then these are going to be null for market orders and this will be null for limit orders. Um, and so I guess we'll go with that. So n read received message. Let's grab the order type first instead of last. And then we can switch, not switch, when order type uh, is uh, da, 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 market or limit. limit or market and then we're going to get all this same stuff the same except up here we should probably and I guess we're not we don't need to use null we can we can use an empty string it shouldn't make much difference okay so got the order type get this guy so if we're in limit or we're in market if we're in limit we want to take size and price and if we're in market we want to take funds then we can keep all this the same we need to put in size and price and we need to add a funds column so let's add that after price I guess so size price funds, then that means we need to go into received order, size price, funds, okay. Yeah, I think if, if you know, I was going to sit down and take the time to actually design this database, um, which would probably not be very exciting to watch on stream, I would maybe come to the conclusion to use a lot of null values. Um, especially for stuff like this where it would be null rather than an empty string but that's a little on the pedantic side for a live coding session because it's really not necessary at least I don't see why it would be necessary right now it just feels better to do it that way but so we need to declare these outside of the scope of this win block so let's do and they need to be variables at this point so var size equals that and I think we can do it this way? Does that, does that work? Do you like that, Colin? Um, where have I, is it this that I've seen? Defining a tuple or something? Does this work? Okay, so my, my understanding of Kotlin is good, but not complete. I have seen this, but I don't remember what it does. Um, looks like maybe it's called a destructuring declaration. Is that what you said? Yeah. But anyway, we can just do this as size equals that. And you know what? That's worth a quick Google search. Kotlin define multiple multiple <laughs> multiple variables at once bars at one time all right that sounds reasonable cool so it looks like Kotlin says no don't do that so we're not going to do that and then we're going to do price funds cool and then delete the val here and just because those take up a lot of space I think I'm gonna put them on one line maybe I'm wrong to do it that way but you can do it that way and I, I just want to it feels like you know the fact that I need to initialize these first is maybe there's a better way to do this so th this is kind of a fun thing that you don't really get with with Java is that you kind of get to look at your code and go, you know what, is this the best way to do this? Because you've just got, there's so many options. Um, uh, 
and this works but you could also do like let's see so size equals if order type equals limit and then you could put you know this or else you know the other thing you want it to equal and you could do that for each of them and that's gonna be shorter actually isn't it yeah that's gonna look a lot better let's do it that way so size so sorry for being indecisive but hey Kotlin lets you be indecisive it gives you options who's gonna complain about that so we've got order type is limit do so for size we'd want it to be this guy and if it's market it's going to be nothing and for price we want it to be the same way it'll be this guy and if it's market it'll be nothing um, also this assumes that there's only two order types I think that's a very fair assumption based on what they show here so we're going with it and then funds of course is going to go on the other side so then we can get rid of this whole wind block and get rid of that and make these back to val. Oh, and it looks like I've copied over a little much and opened up the help section. <laughs> so let's close that. Grab you like that. And so these will be different values based on what our order type is, which is, you know, what we need to differentiate between market and limit orders. Um, don't need that anymore. And yep, this is on GitHub, so if you guys want to find it on GitHub, you can look here. Uh, da, 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 let's get back into here, and it looks like there's a message. Um, so, Ben, you are not using async task for the network on main. Are you using a thread instead? Which is better? So yeah, I am using a thread. Well, actually, it's not um, really using, I'm not really doing anything for that. It is almost entirely, if we jump into, and let's figure out the shortcut for, is it Control-Shift-I? Nope. Control-Alt-I? Control-Alt-Shift-I. Nope. What is it? Make my imports good. All right. Control-Alt-O. That's what it was. Uh, okay. So... Yeah, we're using a thread here to do things with the database, and that's because that's you know it throws an error and tells you to do that. So that sounds like a good idea. But for the actual getting the data part, we're using a WebSocket from the OKHttp OK class, um, which is right here. And so I'm I'm sure this happens on a separate thread. It's just not a separate thread that I'm creating. It's it's from this new WebSocket. So this is all happening behind the scenes for us thanks to OKHttp OK giving us a good WebSocket class. Uh, so it's really nice that we, we don't have to cover that um, and we just get to use it. So that's all happening behind the scenes. No need to worry about async tasks or threads for that stuff. Um, and when we get to the part of doing the REST API, yeah, we'll be, we'll be doing that in a separate thread and we'll, we'll see how to do that. But for now, this is just happening um, just behind the scenes in the WebSocket class thanks to OKHttp. OK uh, all, and if we wanted to do it ourselves, we'd just wrap it in a thread like we've done here. It's really easy. You just type thread, put whatever you want in the thread in the brackets, and then you're doing something on a new thread. Um, all right, so where were we? We just finished up making our received orders have this funds column, which is only going to be populated if it's a market order. And we've got this size and price, which are only going to be populated if it's a limit order which we can tell from right here. Um, yeah. So having made that change, that means we're going to need to update app database to be version six. And then let's run this again and hope that we don't get any errors or that we do. I mean, it's, you know, getting errors is a good thing. It's, uh, you know, how you, how you progress from A to B. All right, there's Messages coming in, get all those received guys, no errors. And you know, I wonder if in the past times maybe it aired out just before we had gotten any of those other types of data. Um, so let me type in 
Maybe let's go with match. Yeah, no, no matches yet. Aha! We have found another error. And this is on a match. Look at that, we got a match! Yeah! All right. We didn't screw up. <laughs> or I didn't screw up. That makes me happy. Um, I mean, actually, obviously, I did screw up. Because there's a class cast exception. But I was correct that we would get a match eventually. It just looks like it was airing out before the match would have happened last time. So all that data we were looking at while I was letting it run was actually only however much it ran before it, you know, hit an error. So, my fault, sorry about that. Let's get to this error, which is in match, and we're converting an int to a string. Uh, okay, so let's, that's gonna be back in, this is getting messy again, so let's close all these. How, is the, how did this get so huge? Um, message parser, there we go. All right, match message. Something cannot be cast to a string. Some integer cannot be cast to a string. So one of these things is giving us an integer, and we're turning it into a string, because so it's gotta be one of these that says as string. Uh, so, let's look over here at match. Match, which one of you is gonna be an integer? Sequence and trade ID. Trade ID, you're an int. Be an int. Huh? Is that gonna throw an error? Can we can we alt enter this one? Can we can we make you that change from here? Change parameter to int. Yeah, you did it. Cool, let's let's double check. It's control B, not alt B. And then we have trade ID with an int. And you know that's I shouldn't have had to check on this. Android Studio, you were supposed to refactor this to an int, which I suppose you did, but come on. Clearly, this should go to something else. Um, now this assumes we're not gonna get a trade ID of zero. Uh, maybe negative one? You know what, we shouldn't get zero. There's no way we get the trade ID of zero, right? We'll go, we'll go with that, we'll go with there's no way. Um, because, well, they show 10 here, but let's see what we got, actually. What's the trade ID in the, in our match guy down here, we've got trade ID. So it is a big number. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that's never going to be zero. So leaving this as a default of zero is fine. And also it's fine because we're going to reset this anyway. Uh, so I think we're good. Let's let this run some more and see if we can get a match again. And what would be really cool is if we could watch it happen on both spots at the same time. Like, we found match that time, right? Right. So are we running? Let's make sure. No, we're not running. Did we? We even erred, what? I screwed up that bad? Okay. A legal argument exception. Could not unlock surface. You know, that's not actually part of, part of anything I did. We didn't, none of this is relating to the app. Hmm. Well, I hope it works this time. That is so frustrating. Oh, there we go. Room cannot verify data integrity. Yes, that's true. I did make a change and not update the version number. So, big takeaway is always update your version number and don't forget. Kind of like putting in the internet permission to your projects. Just one of those things that looks like we're just gonna get used to hitting. Okay, so. Now is there logs? Okay, so match, and this is from this is from four minutes ago. This is oh, look at that! Look at that! We got some matches. What were they for? What were they for? Where's the size? Size point one nine one six one five eight. Look at that! There it is, ladies and gentlemen. 
we did it. We found some matches. And then we've got a 2 and a 2.04 and a 0.05. Nice. Is that Are those going to come in now? Do we get 35? Did we get 35 or did we get an error? All right, 35 going once, going twice. Sold. Looks like we've got an error. Let's find out. Yeah, we sure did. All right, so we got an error on done. And so actually that's back in message parser. I don't know where I'm going. Done message, no value for price. Yep. These are the sorts of little things you're just always gonna gonna hit as you go through. Um, of course, unless you spend time to really read the docs and make sure you get it right the first time, but I feel like that would make really, really boring um, live coding. So market orders will not have a remaining size or price field as they are never on the open order book at a given price. So we just need to make sure that those can be uh, null, which in our case, we're just using an empty string, nothing wrong with that. So done, this is done. We've got remaining size and price. Uh, and so is there an order type here? How do we know it's a market? Um, hmm. So does this give us any hint that it was a market order and we should know that there's not a price? And that's weird because it says market orders will not have remaining size or price field. Here's remaining size. So I think they're lying to us because it, it has a remaining size, but it does not have a price. And it doesn't say anything here about having one and not the other or having a limit order that would not have a price field. So let's just assume that these may not exist. Um, so is there, let's look for like a contains message on JSON. JSON.has remaining size. Then it can equal that. We should spell that correctly, that's rather important. So it has that, then that, else empty string. Uh, okay. And this is a little heavy handed, but you know, this is for sure going to work. So if JSON dot has price that else that and we need that. Okay. So since it says that some of these might not have a remaining size or price field, we'll just put this in here and take the word for it, which is, you know, usually a good idea. Though it looks like remaining size will be there pretty much every time, so. Hmm. Anywho. Back to logging again. And let's get back to making sure we match up match. Oh, there's a bunch more. Um, get some prices over here. Or sizes, rather. Those are a little easier to check. So there we've got that last one. Then we need 12.7 for this guy. Yep, there's that. And I'll just let this run for a few more seconds and I'll check over the chat logs. Nice. Doing good. Or well, rather. And then that's size of five. And that is a side of buy. That's weird, because red, you know, what? What side is it giving us here? I would think that sell means red and buy means green. But these, this last one, these last two are cells and they're green. So let's make sure I'm understanding the docs right here. So this is, these are all matched orders. So match and side. The side field indicates the maker order side. Oh, okay. So the side is telling us which order 
was the one that was standing still? Which order was on the books that somebody else took? Which, so if you have a sell order, so if you're selling like a hundred things at fifty dollars, and then somebody else comes in and buys those, that's going to be green because somebody's buying. But they're going to call that a sell because they're determining it based on whosever order was the one that's on the order books. Um, so, okay, that does make sense then. And 45, 45. So again, they're calling this sell because they're, whoever was selling this had the order over here in the red section, and it was just sitting here on the books and then say someone comes along and buys 26.09 ether then this order comes off the books it'd come over here and be a trade which just happened but they did it in a market order it looks like 26 plus 6 7 and 2 so somebody market bought this many um, so that's what just happened there and these are still coming in right nice wait did we get that 6.6 .6 guy nice all right Okay, so we have got all of our data. That is a huge accomplishment. And now we can start making an order book. So let's look through here. We can just leave that running uh, just to make sure that there's not any, like if we made a mistake with change orders or something like that, it'll spit us out an error and let us know. But we need to scroll up to the overview. Come down here to real time order book. So, send a subscribe message for the product of interest. Check. Cue any messages received over the WebSocket stream. Check, I guess. I mean, we're kind of doing that. That's what we're doing now is taking in the WebSocket stuff and just storing it. Make a REST request for the order book snapshot from the REST feed. Um, let's hold off on that for a second because I feel like we're not quite done with the WebSocket side of things. So, playback queued messages, discarding sequence numbers, well maybe we do want to do this next. Playback queued messages, discarding sequence numbers before or equal to the snapshot sequence number. So what's going to happen is, when we connect to the client, what we're going to get back, or what we're going to start getting in the WebSocket feed is... I guess I need to make this really wide now if I want to get the trade information back. Okay, we're going to get all of this, all the changes. We're going to get everything that's new, but nothing that's already here. So if we just, let's scroll up or down a little bit so we can show something that's already here and not going to move too much. Okay, whatever, we'll just look right here. So see right here at 251, there's an order for maybe, it goes from, let's see, it goes from, I'm pointing at the screen like you can see that, uh, it goes from like 1500 that can be sold to 2,000. So there's like a five, 500 ether that somebody's trying to buy right here at 251.5-ish dollars. Um, and I forgot what I was saying. But, so we get the match. <sighs> okay, so we get this order. <laughs> um, all right, what are we doing? Reset, put my head back on, come back over here. Of course we're not showing the real-time order book. Right, so we need to pull in. So like this order that's here for 500 to buy, we won't have when we connect, right? That order is already there. It's not new information. It's not gonna come to us in the WebSocket feed. So we need to connect to the REST API to give us all the information that's already there. And the REST API is gonna send us back a sequence number and it's gonna say, this is the order book up to this order. So then we need to use that sequence number in addition with all the sequence numbers we've got, you know, here to put everything in order so that we can know what's happening. Um, which is no, no small feat, but we should be able to do it. And right, that's, we moved sequence to the bottom for that one for being able to handle the different columns and such. Okay. Um, so since we've only got like 15 minutes left, rather than try and starting getting into getting the rest stuff or any of that, let's just try and display some completed orders on the screen. I think that'd be a good way to do things and we can leave our button too, just for now. So let's come in here and let's get, can I get a recycler view done in 15 minutes? Maybe, let's find out. 
activity, so we'll still delete this, I guess, relative layout, recycler, and this might not work because I think recycle view is like a special import. So let's go Anko and Recycler view right there. That after our other Anko ones. And I don't know that I need to specify the 9.1, the SDK 15 stuff. But let's bring in Recycler view here. There we go. Okay, so recycle -er view. Okay, then what do you want? What? What do you want? That is not right. Cannot access. Sir, Anko SDK 15. SQL light. Can maybe see what I have here. So do do cradle of this guy. Anko. Yeah, got that one. So that's the same one, isn't it? Nine is that? Is that really what's being complained about? Okay. All right, I'm gonna try and build this. Build or are you gonna throw this this error? So it actually built. So would this even would this actually run too? Okay. So great. There are conflicting dependencies. This is a thing that happens and is super super frustrating to fix. Um, support .app compat. Hotline. Twenty-five, three, one. Wonder if I just copy all of these. Fixed it. Okay, it didn't fix it, but it did make the squiggly go away for a little bit. So let's undo that. Okay, let's do whatever Anko version we're on. I guess point ten. Hmm. Well, I might have to figure this one out off camera because it this is this is certainly not exciting programming at the moment. <sighs> okay. 
cycle view. So let's let's actually copy this guy. Can I copy this somehow? Oh, fine. We'll just type it in. Uh, okay. Cannot access cycle view. Check your module class path. You check your module class path. So usually this this sort of error is because you've got one you've got something in, in Gradle here that is using one thing, and then you've got another import you're using that's using a different version of the same thing. And they need to be using the same version or else you're gonna get a problem. So it's probably app compat up here. I wonder if I change this to the same app compat as this project if I still get that problem. Actually, is this gonna throw an error because I'm compiling in 25? Might. We'll just hit hit run there. I don't expect that to necessarily work. And then over here, another thing. So I've got this commented on. Let's see what that says. Nope, this is about floating action bars. And coordinator layouts. Oh, that's a fun one. Okay, so we're still getting that that error, and I am unfortunately not skilled enough with Gradle from the command line to just solve that right away, though I will start trying now. Um, hmm. Back over here. Wait. Wait a minute. Am I just missing the... Get over here, and then cycle view import. Do I just need the regular one too, maybe? And can we see this from just this most recent year, please? Okay. Now, do I have a recycle view import in this project? No, not other than Anko. So this says Android support v7 widget recycler view. Android support v7 recycler view. Do, do, do. No, that's not what I'm getting. Cannot access class. Okay, let's I can't pull out support so we can leave the this is all the life cycle stuff I'll just put that on new line and this then we've got the Anko stuff that's just Kotlin um, okay access class so that we can put that in quotes to make that wow one result all right your module class fast for missing or 
conflicting dependencies. Recycler view, support library version. You know, we just need an import on this page. Can we not? Is that not what we get? Recycler view, see the recycler view guide. Yeah, see, I don't even have recycler view here. Where am I getting recycler view, Android? What? Just give me the, give me the import. <sighs> the Android support library. Okay, support library import. Android support library import support library setup let's try that one I don't remember changing that did I do that in my other project don't think so The repository section includes a Maven. Yeah, sure don't do that. Core utils, that doesn't. So, okay, I'm going to cheat here and resource directory. Oh, I guess I should just click layout. So, make a layout resource directory, add a new layout resource file named something. Then, inside this resource file, we can do layouts and containers, maybe. Oh, come on, recycler view is such a thing you have in here, right? Recycler view. Yes, I would like to add that library. Very much so. What did you add? Where did that library get added? Oh, oh my God, all it wanted us to do was add the Recycler View library. Why was that not easier to find, Android? Do I really need to make a layout and try to bring out the Recycler View? Unbelievable. Okay, so delete the layout directory. Then we've got our Recycler View. And let's take, I just really want to show these matched, um, matched orders. And really, what the heck is that? Oh, there it is at the bottom. What? No. Oh, can't undo? Whew, not my day. Okay, so give me that guy back. Back in here. Oh my goodness. Okay, I guess we're going to have to hold off on that until next time. Yes, add this library so we can show the viewers at home the missing import. It is this one. So it is the same thing as last time. Um, or the, it showed in the docs up there. So it's this guy, but then I don't think it added that other bit, right? 
Oh no, it did. Look at that. Okay, so I don't remember doing that and I didn't have to do that in another project, but it looks like that's the way to go. And also, it's cool that you can do that layout to get it to pop into place. Alright, so that's a good, or rather a reasonable stopping point for now. So next week, what we're going to try and do is pull this recycle view and we're going to just show the trades on the screen here. And then after that, we will start moving forward on the instructions over here to finish up creating a real-time order book and maybe, if we're lucky, getting to displaying just a little more information about all the data. So that's it for this week, and next week we'll do all that. Take it easy.